Good afternoon, everyone. So we hope you are enjoying the, uh, today's, today's event as much as we are. Um, definitely good to see a, a room full of people taking notes, not asking many questions for the moment. We hope you will have some for us later on. Um, so my name is Jaime Amoedo. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be the moderator for this panel, um, which has been titled uh, Blue Sky Thinking for a Better Island. So we're going to be discussing um, how the Aloman can stand out from the crowd for the competition, and there's quite some competition in other jurisdictions as well, as you know. Um, and we're going to be talking about how we can ensure that the Aloman remains a fantastic place to live, to work, and to, to invest, to do business. No? So um, if I can ask the panel to please introduce yourselves. Ronald, you go first. Yeah, I'm more than delighted to. Um, well, I've lived here since 1994, and. Uh, Certainly, I've not only come to work, visit, uh, and retire also, and then uh, take on this role. But I think if you ask several different people the question, you get a different answer as to what a good place is to live. And I think you come up with your own checklist, but there are some fundamental uh, things that we all need to have a good place to live, and that's uh, not only the environment, and that seems to be the one that everybody focuses on, but it's security, it's a vibrant uh, place to live, and it's sustainable. And I think. Uh, to maintain that, we need to be economically a thriving uh, island. And I think sometimes it's a trade-off because a lot of people want to keep the hidden gem, not want to move forward, but we have to move forward. And I think the island as a, as a, a government has to get hold of its population strategy. And I would actually say, to put a figure on it, I would put 100 and then work a plan around that for economically active people to come along. I think another couple of points I would add to that is in relation to, we've all a role to play, whether that be beach bodies, plastic bodies, whether it be, or busters, should I say, um, <laughs> our role in keeping a sustainable Ireland and green uh, and, and active. I think we need to work as one government. I think my own experience in the last three years is we're not too good at working as one. We have different agendas. As I said to Roger the other day, we're like a football team who all want to win on the same pitch, but we're wearing different coloured shirts and don't pass the ball to one another. And we don't want to lose the game, so we don't have a strike force. But I think, Roger, when we discussed it, we've got so many good strikers in the private sector that we have to pass the ball to. And we should need to engage more with the people who can make it happen, namely in this room. So we're the facilitator and the supporter, and that's what will be. Um, everybody loves a good plan. I've been involved enough blue sky thinking in the past to realize that they end up in the bottom drawer and we don't really make them happen and materialize. So we really need to, to as an island, get hold of this and run with it and make things happen because I think uh, uh, we don't do a particularly good job at this moment in time. So it's a great place to live, uh, but let's focus on the building blocks to make it a great place and keep it a great place to live. Thank you. I, I was thinking uh, when, I, when I arrived to the Aleman four years ago, you remember I was meeting a lot of people, customers at the beginning, um, and the thing that happened every single time in every single conversation, I was asking them, so are you Manx? No, no, I came to the Aloman some years ago. Okay. And yeah, I came actually for three, six months job, a year job, and I've been here for 20 years. And that was the rule. I think every single one <laughs> of the people that I were talking to, it was exactly the same thing. So they, they definitely come and something, no? they fall in love no? with the island. Um, but let me go to Miki. From, from a war perspective, what do you think the Aloman needs to continue doing or do more of to, to ensure that it's the best place to work? Um, well, it's funny, when we were talking about this and planning for this panel the other day, um, I, I set a bit of context for, for Jaime, because um, although I'm Manx, I actually only moved to the Isle of Man in 1997. Um, and then from 2013, I went and worked in Gibraltar for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the reason I came back to the Isle of Man in July 2015 was because I was becoming president of the Chamber of Commerce. And in my speech on appointment, and this is what came to mind when we were talking the other day, um, I talked about what the island needed to do, to what, or what I felt it needed to do to be a great place to work. And, and there were two things that, that I sort of game changers, or I think at the time I called them economy changers, that I focused in on. One was about the island meeting its potential as a centre of excellence for digital technology. And I don't need to say anything more about that today because you've heard from plenty of better minds than me about how, how we are actually turning that into a reality. 
But the other was about our working population. Um, and at the time, I looked at um, or, or pointed to the government's target, net migration target, um, of 500 a year and said that I thought it was woefully inadequate mm. to meet the Vision 2020 strategy and to meet the demographic time bomb, which was ticking. Um, because when we were looking forward 10 years from 2015, um, then the over 65 population was due to increase by 50%. Um, and so I, funnily enough, we've put the same number on it, 100,000 should be our target population. But the key was net inward migration of 1,000 per year, but that 1,000 per year needed to be working people and their families. And that was what would help to address, uh, give the Isle of Man what it needed to drive its economic strategy. So, so, of course, the question I asked myself when we all spoke on Thursday is, did that actually have any impact? Did it make any difference? So the census was the following year, 2016, uh, and the population had dropped from 84,500 in 2011 to 83,300. Uh, the next census, we will hear the results next February, but the GP registrations show that the most we could hope for is a return to the 2011 levels. And if you look at the birth rate over the last 10 years, it's declined by 35.5%. And the school roles are showing that effect now because year eight is our largest year at just over 1,000, but it gradually tracks down to the smallest year, year one, which, only ha which has less than 800 children in it. And that is just going to continue to decline unless we make a very serious effort to tackle this issue. So that one clearly didn't work. Thank you, Mickey. <laughs> Um, and of course, as we know, there's, there's no work without business, without investment, no? So let me go to Roger now. Um, from a, I mean, what is it that the Aloman needs to continue doing or do more of to ensure that we are the place for businesses to thrive, for investors to invest, for entrepreneurs to grow? With relevance to the, the topic as well, with the, the blue, eye think, uh, blue sky thinking, um, what does the government need to do to invest in businesses now? I look around the room, you've got Blackfridge, you've got Gamesys, you've got some very, very bright people on the island already who are doing all the blue sky thinking. And where we fall over is when you want to get a flight to London yesterday to get bright people off and on the island and there's one flight that goes at midday. Uh, you're in Jersey, I was in Jersey for one day and needed to get off Jersey. There were nine flights to London. So, for me, it always comes back to what are we doing as an island about the, the infrastructure that supports the business? What are we doing about education, healthcare, the flights? Are we ever going to license routes? Are we all always going to be held to ransom with flights coming and going when they feel like they need to? Um, a big one is the clusters. We've got the clever people here. Within five minutes, I could probably fill a room with the brightest people I know, blockchain payment, you've got progressive games around the world, you've got digital banking solutions, but the government is not engaging with them, they're engaging outside of that to find out what else they can bring, instead of talking to those clusters, building those clusters, when those clusters are built, it will naturally happen that companies will come here. It was almost an 21 years ago when we brought micro gaming here, it wasn't long before we had a net teller. It wasn't long before we had party. It wasn't long, I'm not saying it was because of us, I was because, it was because there was a cluster that was progressive, it was a cluster that was growing. If the government engages with the clusters are here and understand what makes them tick, they will create an environment where others will come and they will come naturally. Instead of, I think, coming up with fantastic ideas in which nobody can execute because everybody's wearing a different colored shirt. Uh, and it's simple, it's, it's nothing bright, smart, or remarkably intelligent. It's look after what we've got and let's get the foundation for businesses here so that they can grow. Thank you, Roger. Um, I wonder if we have any, any questions from the audience so far. There is a it's a microphone. If anyone needs to, to ask a question, please please raise your hand. Um, There's one there. Huh? Oh, we have one. Okay, we have one on the slide. Oh, sorry. Um, 
So how can the island support blue, blue sky thinkers? How can it attract more captains of industry with new innovative ideas in emerging markets, cannabis, blockchain, gaming? Who wants to take that one? I'll, I'll have a quick stab just because I'm going to stir again. But we get excited about cannabis. I've been involved in cannabis for quite a while now. Um, and it's not going very far because I can't even open a bank account. So there's, there again, we've gone and attracted a very exciting product or a very exciting market, a niche market, but we can't get a bank account if you're involved in cannabis. What's the next step? And how can the government support that? Definitely. Um, Joanne, I'm going to come to you now. <laughs> Um, so do you think we are, um, one, of the, one of the common um, challenges I think of, of, uh, of businesses in the Isle of Man is finding the right talent, no? attracting the right people um, to the island uh, or to their business. Uh, do you think we're selling the Isle of Man well? Um, do we make it easy for those that want to come to the Isle of Man to work, leave work? Hi. <clears throat> Sorry. Hi. Um, do I think we're selling the island well? As somebody who's only just recently moved to the island earlier this year, in some ways, yes. If you're already aware of the island and you're thinking mm. about coming here. And I think that's one of the challenges. What I have found since arriving in many of my conversations um, with many of the different people here is we're not thinking beyond the borders of the island. It seems to stop at the terminals. And with the digital world that we live in today, the ability to work and, and, and promote ourselves globally, virtually, um, I don't think we're taking enough of, of advantage of that. I think there's a lot more we can actually be doing to tap into the global um, digital economy to promote our local businesses, get them engaged maybe through a consortium that is a comprised of private industry, government, chamber, commerce, and others on the island, that if we, as a consortium, were able to come together, create an identity that we wanted to take to outside, outside our borders, um, work collectively to promote that and how we can get our local businesses integrated into more global value chains and supply chains, I think there's a lot of opportunity there that we're just not tapping into yet. And if we can digitize, if we can, get, can virtualize that reach, then we should be able to take advantage and really grow what we have here on the island because it is very unique and it is very special. And, and, and I was really surprised with the scope of industry and businesses on this island. And it is, as I've often heard people say, one of the best kept secrets is how good this island is and what it has to offer. Definitely, fully agree. If I could just to add to Joanne's comments there, I think from, a, from my perspective, there's a lack of a brand strategy for the island. Uh, I know in Visit, we have a small amount compared to other jurisdictions to try and do everything. You know, we're a great place to come and visit, but there's nothing beyond that and it's not coordinated. So I think we, we should focus on having that strategy in terms of how we intend to promote the island, what it's good for, what it can be used for, and the lifestyle it can provide for people who wish to set up and live here. So that's what's missing for me. We also see every year when the kids finish their, their high school, you know, going to the UK, mostly to do the university, and some of them never come back. Um, I just wonder, this, this question is for you, Mickey. Uh, how can we ensure that, we, that they do return? Um, or if they don't go to university, that those that remain, that, you know, they receive the proper education, training, you know, they have the career path very, very clear to, for the needs of the island. What's, what's your view on this? Yeah, I mean, I've got a few, few thoughts about what makes the Isle of Man attractive to young people. And, and the first one is, frankly, to go back to the first point I made, because young people like to be surrounded by other young people. Mm -hmm. So unless we um, address our demographic issues, no young person is want to go, going to want to live in an island that looks like it might be gradually returning in, uh, turning into a retirement village. Um, the other things, very pragmatic things that we could do to make the island attractive to young people, first time buyer housing stock, ideally with subsidised schemes from government to help people get that first step onto the ladder, um, skills and study and, and incentivising students to come back to the island, Man. but I know there's a brilliant panel coming up around, around that subject, so I won't... Um, 
Uh, I won't, won't uh, spend too much time on that. But I also think the other thing is for all of us to really be promoting and profiling the young people within our business as leaders. Um, you know, it, again, looking back at the Chamber speech uh, from 2015, one of the things we really wanted to do at that time was address the middle-aged demographic of Chamber and attract a lot, a lot more younger people into the Chamber of Commerce. And we set up the, the Fuel Committee, the Future Emerging Leaders. And I can't tell you how fantastic it was to see when Chamber announced who their new president was recently was that it was Christian who was, who was the chair of that first fuel committee and that the vice president, so the next president of Chamber, was also from that fuel committee. So from, mm. from future leader to actual president in, in the space of five years. And I think we, sh we should all be looking for those opportunities. And I have to say, it was fantastic to see at the KPMG e-gaming summit that the Isle of Man government chose to be represented there by a young woman. Um, that... That's exactly the kind of uh, front we should be uh, presenting to the world. And, and I'd urge all of you, just look at who typically acts as the face of your business and have a think about whether you could do with a new look. I think that would make an enormous difference. Um, and, and, you know, let, let's be honest, I and, mm. and my fellow panellists and most of the people in this room are not the future of the Isle of Man, and so we need to be promoting and encouraging and putting forward the people who will be the future. Thank you. Ronald, let me get back to you now. Uh, as chairman of Visit Isle of Man, no? your focus at the end of the day is, is attracting visitors to the Isle of Man, as many as possible, and quality visitors. I, I imagine that quite a few of them could potentially decide when they visit the Isle of Man to actually stay in the Isle of Man. Um, and, and we've been hearing a lot, of, uh, a lot about digital um, nomads, no? And we have, Joanne, for, I think, is a, is, a, is a good example of this, no? The move to the Alaman, she's working remotely, no? Like I am now, actually, <laughs> now that I've changed jobs as well. Um, what's your view in, the, in this? Do we have an opportunity to attract these digital nomads? What are they looking for? What are we doing to attract them? Uh, thank you, Hamia. I should say that he sent out a list of questions for us to consider before we came. And being the only non-representative of the digital board, I thought he'd give me a bit of a curveball because I really didn't understand what you were talking about. <laughs> and I must admit, as we sit in department meetings and Lau uh, waxes on about and uses Klingon at times for me, um, I have to write down what he's saying and then I go and investigate exactly what he was talking about. And uh, Lau, if you're in the room, thank you for educating me in digital over the last three years because you've done more than most. Um, but in terms of digital nomads, um, I, I, I went and had a look. In actual fact, I went to digital to have a chat with them, but they were all here getting prepared. So I asked a representative sample of the department, and eight out of ten cats thought it was working from home. Two uh, got it right. Uh, so that was interesting itself. So I thought, I'll go online. That'll be a sensible thing to do. And I got completely different end of the spectrum. You know, sort of, it gave me an impression of almost hippies in a camper van. Um, um, in their sort of twilight years, living a different lifestyle. So um, I then got into the, the depths of it, and uh, excuse me for just referring to this, um, how do they make their money? Well, uh, there were five topics. Freelance, tutor, rent out their home or car, make passive income, start a blog. So I thought Joanna did admit to being the typical profile uh, of a nomad, so I thought, I'll check to see if she's got a blog. And that'll be at least one tick in the box. And there she was uh, on a STEM video last night, which took me about an hour and a half to watch. Very good. I would encourage you to watch it. Um, and then it got into earnings and everything else. But I think it's true. It's probably somewhere in the middle of that. Um, and when we all reflect, sort of reflect, we, we in the Air and Art Centre uh, recruited a new artistic director who had a French wife. Uh, and one of the reasons he couldn't really accept initially was because she had commitments to her uh, European employer uh, and the big issue they had was can we trust them working in a different environment are we sure we can let them work and will they continue to add the value she's delighted she made the move she's French and loves working here uh, and more importantly living here so I think there is a potential but from a business perspective I think there's an education for the business community what is a nomad what value can it add uh, the general view is you're not going to be here much longer than a year. So 
maybe I can just turn to Joanna, who's uh, all the way from Canada for one year only, maybe. So no. maybe you can tell us exactly. <laughs> uh, I hope it won't be one year only. Well, that's what I've we moved want. enough in the last few years. I just, damn, I don't want to move again anytime soon. <laughs> that's for sure. Um, now, in terms of being a digital nomad, um, for myself, because it can vary depending upon a person's circumstances. It could be just for a year. And we're seeing trends where more and more people are looking to have a one-year experience in going and living in another country and working from that country, because they can work remotely. And it's being able to accommodate that. For me, I work for Siemens Energy in the UK, so, um, you know, there's there's that connection, makes it a little bit easier. When we're talking about the tax implications of it, which is really the biggest stumbling block with digital nomads and attracting them onto the island or anywhere. But this is a trend that we're seeing more and more. It's not just the move towards working remotely on a consistent basis or hybrid working. It is actually having the flexibility to work from wherever you want to be living, and people are expecting to be uh, supported in that more and more. There are opportunities, and if we look at some of, say, I know Malta is one of those competitive areas to the Isle of Man in, in many areas, they actually have an active program of supporting um, digital nomads to come onto the island, and this is something you're seeing in many different countries at the moment. And they're, it, they've set up common co-living areas and co-working areas that are totally designed around that digital nomad to entice them onto the island for the time being. And you're seeing this in major US cities and other countries around the world, so it's not just an island thing by any means. And I think we have a real unique opportunity here to start to look at this topic and get in front of it. It is an emerging market, and if you want to attract talent onto the island, um, this is a great way to start. And if you take someone like myself with the background I have, and I've been very fortunate because I've been very supportive from the very beginning with Lyle and so on, I have a unique set of skills and experience that is quite extensive. And in coming onto the island, one of the things that was really important to me was that I'd be able to give some of that back to the island being part of the Digital Isle of Man board, being part of the Love Tech, getting involved in is an opportunity where I can take my experience and my knowledge and bring it back into the local business community to somehow contribute back. So I think that's something we can look at doing and encourage here on the island and take advantage of. And Mickey, how do you think we compare to other jurisdictions? I mean, how, what's our competitive advantage? Well, actually, I can kind of speak to that firsthand, really, because um, uh, after returning to the Isle of Man, um, I returned to, to be a partner at KPMG in the Isle of Man, but, but, but that was until the end of 2017. And since then, I've been part of the leadership group for the KPMG Islands Group. So, of course, that includes a lot of our competitors. Um, and, and at the time that I took on that role, um, they said, so you don't have to be based in the Isle of Man if you don't want. You could move to any of the islands in the group, Malta, Cayman, Bermuda, any of them. And, and I'm going to be honest, you know, as a, as a keen cyclist, and there are so many wonderful things about cycling on the Isle of Man, but the weather is not one of them, I was a little bit motivated about, well, maybe a better climate would be quite nice. But my um, amazing concierge stroke PA, who prefers to be known as my husband, um, decided that he would do a benchmarking exercise across all the possible islands that we could go to. And he looked at the obvious things, so tax rate, availability of accommodation, um, ease of commute, quality of life, cost of accommodation, and various other factors, and came back and said, sorry, Mick, it's the Isle of Man. It, it makes absolute sense on, on every front when you look at the combined, combined picture. So I think that's a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong testament. Um, and, and when you do uh, compare us to perhaps the ones within that group that would be more competitors as digital hubs, so Gibraltar and the Isle of Man, 
Well, the very fact that both are on the top 10 of the world's most densely populated jurisdictions says a lot about the experience in terms of living there day to day. And I wasn't too surprised to hear about a very senior person in an operator who's just made the decision to come to the Isle of Man rather than Malta for exactly that reason, that the, just the sheer infrastructure and environment that we have is incomparable. Thank you. We have a couple of questions on, on Slido. Um, Roger, uh, how should governments support those cluster sectors? Is it listening to their problems? Is it providing connectivity? Is it changing legislation or direct funding, something else? I think it's listening. I think it's very clear. Listen to the clusters. Uh, what the e-gaming companies are looking for, the next big play for the e-gaming companies is going to be raising funding. Watch this space. They'll be listing in the US. They will be attempting to get into the bigger markets because they can't play anymore because the land-based uh, players are getting involved. There will be a number of acquisitions. There will be significant consolidation. Um, I reckon in the first half of next year, you'll see some significant uh, market uh, statements made by uh, a number of land-based players in the US. The US hasn't been touched uh, in an e-gaming sense yet. Um, so, the government to help those businesses would be listening. Is it connectivity? Connectivity meaning flights, meaning healthcare, meaning education. Yes, it's all of those. Um, and yes, the healthcare sector is a huge worry for the island at the moment. We are very top heavy, and if you want anything specialist, we accept and we know we need to get off island. But emergency care now is becoming a problem, and that starts playing on minds when you're building companies. Uh, there's another question on the state bank. bank. Uh, I think it's critical. I think decisions are made off-island, and I bring into play cannabis, blockchain. Um, these are all industries that we're encouraging. We're sitting here discussing. We're all excited about them. It's all about the blue sky thinking we're talking about. Yet the decisions about cannabis, the decisions about blockchain are all made off-island. Um, we've got a bank on the island, we've got Capital International, it's probably the first bank that we've got on the island in the last 30 years. Governments in some shape or form don't need to back them, they need to support them. If they can, and they can make decisions on cannabis, blockchain, that is huge. You will see those sectors grow incredibly quickly. And the rest of you, if I may ask, what, what, in your view, what is the next big thing for the Aloman? My perspective is actually prioritizing what we need to do in line with Roger and making it happen. Yeah. The potential is there. I just don't think the ambition and belief is strong enough. Uh, and I think we can make things happen. Um, but there needs to be a will and an approach in delivery. I, I would agree. And, and actually, we've heard this theme quite a lot from panels this morning, haven't we? It, it's really not about being out there searching for the next big thing. It's about building on and protecting what you've got. And, and I think the, the department have recognized that, right? You know, having a strategic partnerships focus, thinking about how do we protect and build from what already exists. Um, uh, the, Bettina talked about it as well. And I think that, that's the strategy. Let's not, let's not be constantly looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Thank you. John? If I look a little closer at home as to the industry that I'm involved with, and looking at the digitalization, we are making efforts towards the Internet of Things and taking that technology forward. And I think the potential of the island being an incubator with IoT and potentially as we go forward and get look at more of the renewable energies, like the wind, wind farms, and if we tie into that as an incubator for future wind farms or other types of renewable energies, I think there's been a lot of potential there as well within the island. And that feeds directly into our net zero and sustainable energy goals as well. Yeah. So I think there's potential. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much to all the panelists. Fantastic.